If we really start to feel like our back is against the wall, we're gonna dust off our secret or not so secret weapon, but our true weapon is our Father in Heaven. And we know that He neither slumbers nor sleeps, so we can sleep soundly at night knowing that God, God's protection is over us. I'm with Rabbi Tuli Weiss. It's great to have you here on In Grace. And what an event you've been putting on this week, uh, trying to get Christians and Jewish people here in America to get together to support Israel and the right to the land. Right, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the program. And it was great to also have you in Nashville at the first Keep God's Land event. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is really create a, a new movement of Christians and Jews working together really for the first time on our shared interest, which is helping to make America strong, helping to make Israel strong. And by focusing specifically on Israel, on the issue of God's land and not dividing God's land, which uh, has become really the conventional wisdom that the Biden administration is pushing to a two-state solution, which we're a lot of people are upset about, and we're really the first ones to put together this broad-based coalition of Jewish and Christian organizations pushing back against the Biden administration. Yeah, and it's not just um, against the two-state solution. You're all, you're actually coming up with ideas on what it should be and, and how it should be. Okay, so that's good. Let me let me also say that the two-state solution goes back a, a ways, right? I mean, it seems like a lot of administrations have been pushing that. Mm -hmm. How has what happened with Gaza changed? hopefully, people's perception of a so-called two-state solution? Well, it's a good question. You know, in Israel itself, nobody really wanted a Palestinian state. However, October 7th made it very clear that there is no one on the other side, that the people on the other side actually really would just want to kill us and, and, and murder our children and butcher our elderly and rape our women. And so it, it was the nail in the coffin for all of Israel but at the same time, America came out and saying, this proves that we need to have a two-state solution, a state for the Palestinians. So it really just sort of, I think, brought to light that there's a huge disconnect between the American administration and the people in Israel. So um, it also just for us reminded us that the real, you know, we tried, we tried giving it away and didn't work. God seems to be preventing Israel from giving away its land. And even though some admin Israeli administrations have really offered extremely ridiculous amounts of land, and they always fell apart at the last minute. God seemed to have been preventing that. And so it's our time to really show God that, no, you you gave us this land, you promised it to us, and not only is it not ours to give it away, but we're going to ensure that we keep it. And so you have Jews and Christians who both believe in the Bible and believe in the covenant that when God promises Abraham, and everybody quotes Genesis 12, 3, and, you know, bless those who bless you or curse those who curse you. But that whole section there, God is telling Abraham, go to the land, right? And there I will make you a great nation. And he gives Abraham the covenant of the land. And he says, it's, it's going to go through your son, Isaac. It's going to go through his son, Jacob, and then the 12 tribes. It was a very clear, you don't have to mm -hmm. be a Bible scholar, mm -hmm. right? To understand that the promise that God made to Abraham and his descendants through Isaac and Jacob was unconditional and uncompromising, meant to be taken literally. And so that's exactly what we as Jews and Christians believe. And so it's our time to say, you know, God, you were faithful to us by bringing us back to Israel. And now it's our turn to show you that we're faithful to you. And we're going to make sure that we're not going to allow anybody to get in our way and divide God's land. Before October 7th, Israel, on my trips to Israel, was very divided. Uh, our, our traffic was blocked by protesters, and it just seemed like, what in the world's happening? Since that day, though, there has been a, a, a quick unity of the Jewish people. Um, so we've seen that, and obviously that's what sometimes tragedies will do, unfortunately, was bring us together. And that, that did seem to solidify yeah. Israel as, as a nation. Let me ask you a question, though, on the spirituality of people, because there's there's plenty of Jews in Israel that aren't spiritual or kind of, you know, just a little bit spiritual. Um, has that changed, changed since October 7th and even what just happened with Iran? So that's a great question. Since October 7th, there has been a major revival of Jewish spirit, and people are coming towards faith in ways that have 
never happened before in the Jewish history. Nobody could have ever imagined that, like you said, we were fighting with each other a year ago, and now the religious soldiers are giving their lives for the people who in the South, who are the peace activists, who are totally secular, without hesitation. Mm. And so I think that a lot of people in Israel recognize that, you know, we are a nation, but we're also a family. Mm. And we fought together, just like families sometimes fight together. But at the end of the day, we have each other's back. There's been this revival in the IDF, where soldiers who were not observant are now wearing kippah, wearing tzitzit underneath their clothes, and they are saying the Shema. They have badges on their arms that have the third temple because they they recognize that this is something above us. It's something beyond any of us and uh, see the war that we're in, not only as a military battle, but as a spiritual battle and they know what they're fighting for. And I think that the hope is that the revival that's happening in the IDF, the religious fervor that's taking place in the sol- with the soldiers is spreading throughout Israeli society. But I also believe that it's going to spread beyond to the Jewish community outside of Israel, and then as well to the to the nations who are watching what's happening in Israel and will be inspired by this re- religious revival that's happening in Israel. The world needs a revival. America needs a revival. And it's a, it's a revival for Israel's survival. It's a revival for America's survival. Emanating from Israel, it's, it's really prophetic. It's biblical. <laughs> Um, So with the attack from Iran and hundreds of advanced drones and missiles um, heading toward you, toward your family, toward toward those you love, and to have so little uh, damage or casualty, um, it seems miraculous to me. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I woke up my children on Sunday morning. You know, we went to bed terrified and we woke up and... You know, with such gratitude to God that he, he, he brought us out of Egypt. He brought us out of slavery, brought us out of bondage. He, he split the sea for us. And I woke him up and I said, we all need to pray and we all need to show, you know, gratitude and express our thanksgiving to the Lord. And uh, the kids, I didn't even have to explain it to them. They understood that because they were scared and they recognized that they lived through a miracle that will shape them for the rest of their lives. It's awesome. And uh, Passover is coming, and I know that um, you, the Jewish people remember that that night, remember that that miracle of, of the sparing of the firstborn, um, then being released from bondage and being born as a nation as you exited the Red Sea, the water collapsing down upon the most powerful nation on the planet. So God has a way of taking care of the situation, the solutions. Um, what? What's the balance for us? Like, what what should people be doing versus let, letting God do do things? Like, right. where do you find that balance? That's a you know I was thinking about that myself because you know somebody asked me what do I do and I said I was explaining what Israel 365 is and he said oh so you do Israel advocacy I said yeah exactly I do Israel advocacy and he said to me well you're doing a terrible job <laughs> nice <laughs> so uh, you know I was a little discouraged by that and I went to ask my rabbi I said maybe I should just give up maybe I should just stop Israel 365 and just sit and pray all day long. Right? Only God could solve this. And he said, well, that, you know, he said, no, that's not how God works. God doesn't, God doesn't work the same exact way as he worked in the book of Exodus. God is looking for us to partner with him. And he's looking for somebody to do even a tiny little amount and he'll do the rest. And he could do what he could do, what it would take me, you know, a hundred years, God could do in a, in a blink of an eye. And so we're doing the best that we can. And certainly in grace is doing a lot to help, but then God will certainly do the rest, take care of the rest. And one final idea from the Passover, you mentioned Passover. So there's a phrase that we say in the Seder, and we say that in every generation, they tried to kill us, they tried to annihilate us, but God saved us. And so that's what we know is the our secret weapon. We have actually two secret weapons. We have something in the south of Israel in the town of Demona. That's a secret, not so secret weapon that I think our enemies need to understand that if they really start, if we really start to feel like our back is against the wall, we're going to dust off our secret or not so secret weapon, but our true weapon is our father in heaven. And we know that he neither, neither slumbers nor sleeps. So we could sleep soundly at night knowing that God God's protection is over us. Wise words. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, 
I hope you enjoyed our program on YouTube. We want to continue to provide you some great videos on God, the Bible, and how it all connects with our world. It would really help us if you would consider subscribing to the InGrace YouTube channel. We would also like to have you comment. We will try to read and respond to them. And we also need you to hit the notification button and like the InGrace episode that you just saw. These ways will help more people hear about InGrace and more people hear the gospel of grace.